Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin here, and today I'm here to give you my experience of the Dell XPS 13. But as a disclaimer before I start this video, I've actually never reviewed a PC before, nor have I really used one as a daily computer ever since my Gateway Netbook about 5 years ago. So by no means am I going to be talking about this computer as if I was a PC expert, but instead give you my impressions from my use, and more from the perspective of an everyday consumer, which is what this computer is targeted for. But by the way, if you'd like to pick up a set of beautiful custom dbrand skins, as you can see here, be sure to check the link in the description section below. So hence its name, this is the Dell XPS 13, and it features a 13.3 inch Full HD anti-glare display. They call this an infinity edge as it is probably one of the thinnest bezels you will find on a computer. The display is pretty nice, it's got decent viewing angles and pretty good colors, but I do wish it was a little bit brighter. What I would suggest though is to spend the extra money and get a QHD Plus display with a 3200 by 1800 resolution as it also brings a touch screen to the computer as well. The prices range anywhere from $799 to $1299 before you customize it, and the model featured in this video is the $999 option which has a 6th generation Intel Core i5 processor that is clocked up to 2.8GHz, along with 8GB of RAM as well as 128GB in solid state storage. The laptop itself is very nicely constructed, and I really enjoy the build quality, especially coming from a Mac. At its thinnest point, the XPS 13 is 9mm thick, and on the left side you'll find your power port, a thunderbolt, a USB 3.0, 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as a power indicator. And on the other side you'll find an SD card slot and another USB 3.0 port, so really no complaints about the I.O. here, but I would have liked to see one more USB port. I really enjoy the look of the laptop however, from its thin display, a nice uniform look to it, and the fact that it just felt solid all around. The carbon fiber dbrand skin on the outside also went really well with the internal design. I found the trackpad and keyboard to be very responsive and the typing experience was pretty nice, though I did find the keys to be slightly soft from what I was used to. The keys were pretty nicely spaced out however, and I enjoyed the typing a little bit more than I did on my 12 inch MacBook which is what I've been using for school for the past 4 months. The keys are also nicely illuminated as well. In addition to that, I didn't have any problems with the trackpad, it was relatively responsive and smooth, and that's always nice to see. But after I replace my MacBook 12 inch with the XPS 13 to use at school for a couple days, I'm going to kind of talk about how I enjoyed it and whether or not I can recommend it to students out there. But I think a lot of people will enjoy it most simply because the fact that it is lightweight, easy to carry around, and also very sturdy and well built. So for schoolwork, I tend to do a lot of word processing, typing down notes, or just browsing the web to do some research, browsing my Twitter page most of the time, responding to emails, and stuff like that. And obviously, as you would expect, this computer handles stuff just fine. But I have to mention, if you plan to get the XPS 13, you really cannot come into the buying decision looking to do any sort of video or high-res graphics processing. With an Intel i5 processor and an internal 520 GPU, you really cannot expect to be video editing on this thing. And I can highly relate that to my buying decision of the MacBook 12 inch. It took me a really long time to decide whether or not it was worth the money for what it was able to do. Ultimately though, I hate carrying a big computer around and the XPS 13 was a perfect size and weight and I actually really enjoyed my time using it. But as someone who does a lot of video editing for YouTube work, I would most likely only purchase the XPS 13 as a secondary computer that I do my word processing on, watch some videos, check the scores, or read the news, as the spec limitations of this computer would really hinder my workflow. At the same time though, I really appreciate having a computer like this to take around with me on the go. But I would say if you're looking to spend around the $1,000 range for a computer, and you're thinking between a MacBook Air 13 inch, a MacBook Air 12 inch, or the MacBook Pro Retina, this should definitely be factored into your decision if you're not someone who's overly integrated in Apple, and I would personally recommend to spend the extra $300 for the QHD display. The speakers on this computer are also great as well. It delivered a very clear and loud sound. Of course, at this point of the review, I've already talked about a fair share of trade-offs and limitations as to the specs on the XPS 13, and the fact that it isn't really a gaming computer or a computer that you'd be buying to do some 4K video edits. 
That being said, I thought it'd be nice to test out a PC game on this computer as a lot of people do buy PCs to play games on, whether it is casually or competitively. I'm someone who literally does not play any computer games at all and barely had time to play any console games. So I asked my friend Dave Lee from Dave2D who kindly lent me his Steam account what game I should try on this computer. So here's me trying to walk around and figure out the controls of Team Fortress 2. I would say that this game would rank as medium in terms of graphic intensiveness and I set it to the full resolution of 1080p and from walking around I didn't notice any issues at all. I tried to boot up Assassin's Creed Unity but I had some problems booting that onto this computer but I was told that this computer isn't really for intensive gaming at all. So at this point in the video it's kind of time to wrap up my thoughts of the Dell XPS 13. I really quickly figured out that this computer is intended to the regular consumer as well as students. People who plan to be productive in terms of word processing, taking notes, sending emails, watching videos, and also doing some light to moderate gaming. With the $999 spec model I have here, it handled all those tasks no problem. But I will say that that price point is not cheap in terms of what you're getting. But it really comes down to whether you think paying a premium for the build quality, reliability, and just the slim form factor of the XPS 13 is worth it. And whether or not these specs are able to deliver what you need in a daily basis. But other than that, this wraps it up for my impressions of the Dell XPS 13 and I'd like to give a huge thanks to Dbrand for letting me check this computer out. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next video.